Welcome to this um, open day talk for the uh, BA Global Liberal Arts, which is um, offered out of the School of um, History, Religions and Philosophies at SOAS. Um, I'd just like to share the screen because I've prepared a couple of slides um, to introduce um, the program, basically. And we'll just do that. And I think that will probably take around 15 minutes or so. Um, and then we can move on to um, questions and answers. Um, does this come out right? Okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, so um, the Global Liberal Arts is um, a relatively new degree at SOAS. We started it about five or six years ago. So we've only had two cohorts of graduates, I think two or three. Anyways, um, so it's um, it's um, a growing degree at the moment and we're investing in it. Um, and right, so it's, it's ha it has a very um, kind of uh, broad scope in terms of what it wants to achieve and, and where it, uh, um, it situates itself. So um, it is a degree that aims at um, kind of making use of all the resources and possibilities that SOAS offers. And obviously um, the, the concept of liberal arts, I don't know why this does it, same time happened last time I said this, <laughs> just moves on uh, on its own. Um, is a uh, global liberal arts or liberal arts degree is, is um, something that is relatively new in this country, um, is popular in, in the US and a couple of other places. So, but, but it's, it's something that very much speaks to the needs um, of the world and of our times at, at the moment um, in, in so far as it moves away from the very kind of um, focused uh, kind of trend towards very narrow specializations in, in many subjects and, and tries to go back to this old idea, the liberal arts idea to kind of educate generalists that are able to engage uh, with a lot of different things and um, um, kind of recognize problems, identify problems and work out solutions in cooperation uh, with many others. So one of the um, core concerns of, of the degree was to, um, to bring all these different areas of specialization together and make sense of them, um, bring ourselves in the position of, of the places and people we study, uh, also through the language, and I'll probably talk about the language um, a bit more later, um, and thinking global terms rather than in, in narrow uh, local terms or, or narrow disciplinary terms. So it's, it's a quintessentially interdisciplinary um, degree program. Um, and obviously that's the liberal arts concept, but as we are at SOAS and, um, and SOAS has a very global outlook, um, we um, thought it should be a global liberal arts degree. And it's probably one of the first that had been established. Um, so I've just had another look so far, I've only been aware of one other global liberal arts degree in Japan at Ritsumeika University. Um, and I've just seen there is now another one at a university in Hong Kong in university um, who also offers a degree in global liberal arts. Um, so um, it's um, an, an interesting uh, kind of global spread so far in terms of this particular degree, um, but, but just leave it, I'll, I'll just leave it at, at, at that for, for the moment. Um, so it's, it's about connections and it's about in terms of the degree program, um, it's it's a degree that very much requires you to be in charge of what you're doing, um, and that's a very key part of the pro of the program. Um, so there are kind of four key um, features that distinguish it, um, and uh, the first one is flexibility. Um, maybe to an extent that needs to be narrowed down a little bit um, currently, um, uh, which means that you're basically you have a couple of core. Um, modules at each step of the program. Um, but beyond that, um, you are basically free to create your own program um, within a few parameters about the structure. And, and the key element here is that you're required to bring the humanities and social sciences disciplines together. Where you put your focus or what you kind of um, what where, where you want to give uh, what you want to give more emphasis that that is up to you is for you to decide um so that brings us to the second feature which is interdisciplinarity um and um so you have the, the humanities social sciences and languages so you basically can draw from modules from across the school from from all the departments and subjects that SOAS has to offer which is obviously doesn't include the hard sciences uh, which is kind of 
maybe um, a, a tiny shortcoming, but but it's probably enough to to be able to uh, to study all the different um, social sciences and and humanities disciplines. Um, that's probably from I, I mean my, my background is in the humanities so so I, I think to to emphasize the need to integrate humanities subjects and humanities perspectives into the study of, of our world is, is quite an important thing at, at the present time. Um, so in terms of more uh, kind of skills focused um, aspects of the program, um, it encourages reflexivity, not just learning stuff in a, in a sense, but thinking about how we learn. Um, and as I said earlier, how to recognize where the crucial issues are, how you can articulate them, how you can find ways to find answers to questions. Um, and that's probably um, a, an approach that you'll find in, in many other, not only humanities subjects, but, but in, in, in all kinds of academic disciplines generally, or, or should, that should be the case at least. Um, and then we're also thinking about employability uh, in terms of um, a, a, another range of general skill and thinking critically, solving complex, complex problems, also working in teams um, and um, creating synergy um, with the people that you're working together and studying together with. Um, so that's um, more kind of the, the general idea behind the program. Um, and in the next couple of slides, um, I wanted to talk a bit more um, in detail about the structure of the program, how it's um, kind of set up. Um, and there will be a change um, next year from what you can currently see on the website. This is going to be updated um, in, in the next couple of weeks. Um, so if this, what you see here, is slightly different from what you might have seen on the website, this is the reason. So we are continuing to improve the program if you want. Um, so from next year, um, the first year, so this is um, the structure of the first year of the degree, maybe something to it's, it's half of the structure. So the general structure is that you have um, one fourth of your modules, 30 credits, um, you have 120 credits per year, 30 credits are the core, the compulsory uh, core part, which uh, is about skills and methods. Then you have another 30 credits uh, for which you choose modules that have a global scope. And you have another 30 credits for which you choose modules uh, with a regional focus. Um, and another 30 credits uh, with, with a focus on, originally it was language study, so you had to study um, one of the languages that are offered at SOAS. And maybe one important aspect to emphasize here is this does not include European languages. Uh, it's, it's languages of um, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Um, We've changed this two or three years ago to, um, to, to a system where you can also choose uh, studying subjects that work with languages instead of studying languages themselves. Um, basically to um, accommodate students who, who didn't feel that languages was for them, um, to, to put it very simply. Um, so the idea is to, to get a sense of how language work and you can also do that um, through studying literatures, for example, or other um, um, other art forms. Um, so, in the in the new version of the program, you will have the choice uh, to do for the for the fourth track, the original language track. Um, it's been expanded to languages, uh, literature, and arts. So, this might include um, visual arts, creative arts, uh, or even cinema and, and this kind of um, digital arts, if you want. Um, so that's, that's the general scope. For the first year, you will start uh, with um, the compulsory module in the first term, which is an introduction to global liberal arts, which will basically go through the concept of, of liberal arts, uh, what it means at SOAS, in, in, and um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, and, and the other part of the program would be to talk through, to, to design your own degree program um, and to kind of make you aware of the possibilities that, that you have um, at SOAS to create your own program. And, and the major assessment uh, for this module uh, will be to create a, a program structure and a syllabus for your own program. 
um, just to make sure that you've thought through the whole journey that you're going to take to, to be aware of kind of, say, if you wanted to do a, an economics um, module or development studies module in year two or three, just to be aware that this might mean that you need something similar in the first year um, to, to work towards that. Or if you have that in the final year, do something in the second year that helps you work towards a dissertation. So kind of try to think uh, through possibilities, what your aims are with that um, program, where you want to get at, what you might want to do for your final um, uh, for your final dissertation or kind of final year project. Um, this might be too early for many, um, but I think if, if you have the opportunity to talk through these ideas right at the beginning, listen to what other one, what, what other students want to do, want to get out of it, what thoughts they have um, and ideas. Um, this, this can give you some kind of inspiration to, um, to, to shape your own thoughts and, um, and ideas and program. So, so this is um, uh, an, a, a new part that you won't find on the website yet, but that will appear there soon. Um, the second uh, part of the skills track in the first year is a um, module that's currently um, or is um, offered out of the history department, which is called Colonial Curricula, Empire and Education at SOAS and Beyond, uh, which is based on um, the, the point of departure for that module is the study of SOAS as an institution, which obviously has um, a reasonably interesting history um, being based in the history of, of yeah, the British Empire, basically, uh, being um, a child of the empire in many ways, um, founded in 1916 um, in, in a very um, interesting and um, um, yeah, problematic period when, obviously, in, in, in that context, the empire still existed, but, but in the 20th century world, we start to get decolonization movements. So, so it's um, a module that departs from the history of SOAS as an institution in this imperial context to work through the history of education, educational institutions, and um, the, the, the inequalities and, and biases that, that are implied in that. So it's, it's basically thinking through this case study, thinking through the structures that, um, that define the world in, in which we live, basically, and then think through that. Um, and maybe on the skill side, it, it has is, is a, within history certainly a very innovative um, module insofar as it uses assessment methods that depart significantly from the traditional essay um, um, and uh, exam uh, assessments. Um, and it includes things like um, using kind of visual media to present the result of, of your investigations or to, to write blog posts. Some students have written syllabi for for school courses and, and that kind of thing actually also been at schools to talk about what what they've learned and studied so it's very much a module that speaks to current concerns about um yeah, decolonization and then decolonizing the university the, the curriculum so it's, it's very much based on this kind of questioning um, of the structures um, that have created the, the world of inequalities and injustices in, in which we live, basically. So that's the, the compulsory part for the first year. Um, then for, for the global part, um, there is a, a, a currently, um, you'd have to take a course called World Histories, which is an introduction to world history. It's kind of um, telling a, okay, not a similar story, but telling the history of the, the, the story of the world, if you want, from a historical perspective. Um, in the new version, you will also be able to choose um, modules from, for example, anthropology um, or just thinking. That's, that's the, the examples that you see here are basically from history and anthropology. I, I think there was one other um, uh, development studies might have a course that does address um, the kind of global scope um, of, um, of development studies. So there, there will be a small range of courses that you can choose from rather than to kind of force you to do the history course. Um, politics also offers um, a world history course, which is slightly different from, from the history one. So that's the second track, the global track. Um, and then you have a, a third track, which is um, about the regional focus. So currently, most of the modules here are from the history um, side. Um, there will be a few more um, on, on the new list that will um, go up on the website very soon. Um, so this basically means that you 
that you choose modules that um, might be on, on Africa or the Middle East uh, or South Asia, or they might be about very specific countries, um, such as, I don't know, China or um, what else? Not in the, I think our first year courses all tend to be a bit broader than that. So, so this is why, why you get these more kind of big regions rather than specific countries. Um, and then for the for the language track, the fourth track, you get language, um, literature and art as I've explained earlier. Um, and for that, I've just put a couple of examples on these slides. Um, that's the languages from which you can choose. Uh, or you can, as I said, learn about language or study subjects that work with language instead, which is maybe literatures and cultures is the most obvious ones, but um, uh, you also have um, a small number of courses um, on uh, things like cinema and, um, and from the, uh, the creative arts or the, the arts generally. So that's the first year. I forgot to say, if you have questions along the way, um, maybe just write them into the chat, just not to forget about them. Um, uh, or maybe as we're a small group, you can also ask, I think. Um, so let's move on to the second year then. In the second year, you will have um, a core module um, that's currently a full year module um, that is called Philosophies of Interpretation and Understanding. Um, so this is a module that speaks to, um, um, I mean, kind of further um, in, a, in a kind of more, more thorough, different kind of way, um, the, the skills to kind of um, uh, question things um, and, and think through things uh, more theoretically. Um, logically, if you want, um, think of ways of, of um, interpreting and understanding, as, as the title says, um, is actually part of the program that goes very much back to the original idea of, of liberal arts as this kind of um, universalist um, 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 area of, or kind of way of, of studying um, the world and, and human existence and um, whatever else you, you might want to study. Um, then for the global track, uh, there is a whole range, and I, I didn't list the um, uh, uh, modules um, uh, um, uh, in, in detail, but it's, it's a range of courses, that's actually quite a long list from anthropology, economics, history, politics, uh, development studies, um, languages and cultures, basically all the subjects and departments um, that SOAS has to offer. What I found when I was compiling um, these courses, interesting that you have certain disciplines that tend to have more uh, global scope courses than others that tend to be more regional focused. So interestingly, in history, for example, we tend to be more regional and we almost had to force ourselves to, to offer global courses. Uh, whereas in, um, in economics and in politics and in international relations in particular, probably most of, the, of, of you will choose global courses will study um, so, um, modules from, from those subjects. Um, that's quite interesting, although I thought that was interesting. Uh, so you pick a global course, you have a regional course, um, and again, it's, it's a long list of different things. It's probably best if you just go to the website. Um, the best way to do this, tip, uh, uh, type in open options into the search box and you get a long list of all undergraduate open options, languages and non-languages. Um, and I think this gives, gives you the most accurate overview of the kinds of things you might be able to study if you choose this program. Um, and um, the fourth track languages remains unchanged throughout the program. And we can move on to year three, um, where the skills and methods, the compulsory part will be your dissertation, um, uh, which can be either a uh, 10,000, is it 10,000? Yes, 10,000 word dissertation as in all the other undergraduate subjects, uh, or it can be um, a, um, a project-based, um, fi a final year project that is not, that is accompanied by a longer um, uh, essay that explains what the project is about, what your approach to it was, what, what you, what questions you did ask and, and, and what uh, your results were, but it might come in the form of a, um, uh, of a documentary, of a podcast, of a website. You might want to integrate visual or audiovisual material. So, so there is a bit of a larger scope here in terms of what you can do uh, for your final year project. Um, 
And so, so that's the compulsory part of the final year for which you have a workshop that goes along with it, where you can um, uh, discuss your own um, progress on your project with your fellow students um, and with the uh, dissertation convener. Um, and you will also have a supervisor from a subject um, that, or from a discipline that, that is closest to the project uh, that you want to study or with an expertise that is closest uh, to, to the subject that you want to study. So part of the first um, kind of stages of this final year project will be to um, articulate what your project is about, kind of write a proposal, um, and then go and find the right person to supervise it, um, which is um, an interesting exercise in itself. So you have to get a sense of, again, what, what the options are at SOAS, um, what, what it offers, and how you can actually find what you need. Um, probably that in itself is quite an important skill to learn for, um, for whatever comes after um, your program. Um, and again, you have the global um, track um, with, and I just put a couple of, of examples there. Um, and you have the regional track and you have the languages, um, literatures and arts. Not just seen, there is a question here. All right, Dan, this is you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, right, it's probably not necessary to say more about this. this. That's probably the most important features of the program and its structure. Um, so one of the things that might make this, this whole program difficult for students is obviously that every single student ha can have quite, quite different programs. So there's only the, the compulsory core modules where um, you can, I mean, where you would meet um, the other students on, on your program, uh, which is why we started um, a, a while back to, um, to um, arrange um, kind of regular meetings with the students on the program to exchange their experiences. Um, and to have a kind of forum um, to, to talk through um, whatever kinds of issues that might have come across um, and whatever experiences they have to exchange um, um, their views on modules, what they would recommend, what they probably would not recommend. So, so there we, we try to, to um, in, increase the activities alongside the program, of that kind of thing that gives you um, a sense of community with the fellow students on your program. Um, and I think the final, now it doesn't move. When I want it to move, it doesn't. Interesting. Let's see what I've done. Good. Okay. Um, I think this is the final slide that I've prepared, um, and this basically in response um, to uh, questions I've got from students who are currently um, at the at the early stage um, of writing their dissertations. Um, questions of what have previous students actually um, studied in their final year for the dissertation. Um, and I've gone through all the previous dissertations that we've had from the last three years, and I've just put kind of single out um, five, just because of um, limitations of space on one slide, I guess, because I've, I thought it was absolute. So I've, I've only become con kind of yeah, I'm interim convener of the program currently, um, so I haven't been too much involved um, in, in it earlier. I've been involved in it right at the beginning, uh, but not afterwards. So I thought it was really interesting to see the, the large scope and, and the really kind of um, interesting topics um, just from the titles of the dissertations. Um, and they belong really in all kinds of different disciplines and, and, and bring uh, these different aspects of study together. So um, just for the title, I thought it was amazing. A Her Story of Bicycle Counterculture. Um, then to be honest, I forgot now what this is about in terms of, of the region. I should have added um, the subtitle. Um, and if you're interested, I'm happy to look it up and then provide that information later. Um, th there was another one on uh, weaponizing women in the Somali civil war. So there are a couple of dissertations that um, in, in, in involve or speak to um, aspects of kind of gender studies, um, studies of conflict and war. Um, there was one on traditional African environmental ethics as a guide for future conservation. So there's a lot of interest in environmental issues, um, which um, is obviously um, um, a subject or a, a problem, if you want, um, that, that is um, very topical at the moment, couldn't be more so. 
um, and is studied at SOAS in, in various ways in, in different departments. So you can find relevant courses um, in development studies in anthropology and politics. Um, that's probably the key ones, but certainly also um, law, <laughs> um, basically everywhere. So you could study um, a, a certain subject from all kinds of different views, which, which might be something interesting. Again, just to pick up to something I said earlier, if this is an idea that you have, it would make sense to think about the whole program um, at an early stage to be able to plan it in, in, in a good way. Um, and then um, other subjects that are more in the area of international relations, uh, like this one on relations between Iran and Iraq, hegemony and ideology. Um, and there was another one um, that is again speaking to, to gender issues, quota for women's employment in India. Um, so it's just a few examples um, that, that might give you an idea um, of what kinds of, of topics, subjects, disciplines um, uh, previous students previously have chosen for, for their final year dissertation. Um, and that's actually all I wanted to say about the program. So if I, I help, we, we do have a significant time, I think, so, so, so sufficient time, sorry. Uh, for your questions now, but but just if, if you um, have questions later on, don't hesitate to get in touch. This is my email address. Um, as I said, I'm I'm currently I'm the interim convener of the program because the person who uh, the colleague who convened the program last year has left SOAS this summer, um, and we're currently um, running a search uh, for a new colleague who will be in charge of the program from now on. We will also continue working on it and, and developing it further. Okay, um, right, I think I can stop the sharing. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions um, you might have. Any questions? <laughs> Ideas, comments? Um, hi, um, thank you so much. That was really informative. Um, uh, I just have one question that is, um, in terms of applying for the course um, with the personal statement, um, uh, is it, um, do you kind of, is it useful to show such a wide range of interests um, like that the, the course provides, if that makes sense, like in within the personal statement? Um, yeah, if that doesn't make sense, let me know. No, it does make sense. That's a good question, actually. Um, I, I think it would be good just to try to explain why this is something that speaks to you. I don't think that you have to say, I want to study everything that's there. Uh, that's not necessarily the point. Um, it's, it's about trying to bring different things together. So if, if you end up saying, OK, I want to study for example, um, Arabic or, or Amharic or, or another Middle Eastern languages. And then I really want to focus on um, um, literature in Arabic and, and maybe some other li uh, literature of some other areas and, and the arts and maybe do a bit of history. Uh, then I would probably say in that case, why don't you study um, languages and cultures and do history as an open option? This would be probably more appropriate. So I think that's, that's something to think through, whether this is the program that you need because of the kinds of things that you want to study, that you're interested in, that you want to bring together. Uh, but if you feel you do actually want to focus on literature, and, um, and this is a program that lets you study literatures from all different places, but actually to a limited extent, you also are required to do social sciences to some extent. So, so that's what you would need to consider, I think, in, in your decision um, about wanting to do this or rather something else. Thank you. Does that make sense? I mean, it's just about really show what your motivation is um, mm -hmm. and don't worry too much about kind of reflecting exactly what it is that, that is offered here. Cool. And do you, um, I'll just ask one more. That um, That's really interesting about being able to write a dissertation in um, lots of different like not just an essay or um, a written dissertation, but um, is that a kind of um, practice that happens throughout the degree or is it like to kind of show and share research through those more unconventional ways or is it 
mostly essays and then at the end you can have the option that's a really good question so that kind of reflects um some of the changes um and transformations that probably not only so as a lot of education institutions higher education institutions have gone through, gone through in the last couple of years basically trying to go away to get away from this very narrow focus on essay writing and exams especially in the humanities um, so we now have a couple of modules that integrate other kinds of assessments. Um, and in, within this program, the, the best example is the one that I was speaking about earlier, the colonial curricular module. Um, you're right to point to this in the sense that there is so far no systematic training to do these things. So the students um, who have done these alternative formats so far for their final project, uh, were mostly students who already had skills in filmmaking, for example, documentary skills, who didn't need extra training to, to do that kind of thing. Um, that's something that um, the school is currently working at. Um, so in, um, in the School of Arts, for example, there, there is a module about podcast making. So you could consider doing this alongside um, the second year program, for example, if, if that's an idea that you have to use um, a different format for, for, for the final year project. It's not yet well established for other kinds of production. Um, that's something I'd have to check in the past. Anthropology used to have a module on documentary making. I'm not sure if this still exists, not something that I've come across in the last couple of months. Uh, but, but these are things that with, with a new convener and um, kind of investing more into the program, we, we want to, um, to um, emphasize more. Um, and within um, HRP, the, the School of History, Religions and Philosophies, we've started a, a history blog um, at the beginning of um, this calendar year. And we run regular events about um, writing blog posts. Um, and also, I mean, this is um, meant to be um, a, a platform that uh, brings our students together as a community to, 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 to make this their own, um, to work on projects. Um, so, so this could also be considered as, as one way where you could develop this kind of skill. So we currently have two students who are working on the editorial team. Um, and um, we've also started producing a podcast within the scope of that. Um, so this is the kinds of things that we are currently doing, um, but I think um, it's, it's a very good um, um, question to ask because I think we actually need a bit more of that. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, right. does this answer your question? I, I yeah, no, definitely. Went a bit um, <laughs> on what, what you were asking, I think. Okay. Do we have other questions? Maybe, Andrea, um, so we still do have sort of 10 minutes or so. You spoke quite wonderfully about how there's lots of opportunities for students to get together and to meet each other. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important given the situation that we've just been through and are hopefully coming towards the end of. <laughs> um, but yeah, what about, um, could you speak a little bit about opportunities for students to meet academics? So maybe academic tutors, maybe um, okay. um, office hours, that, that sort of thing for support. Good point, I hadn't thought of this at all. <laughs> Right. So um, as all of also as students, um, uh, you will have a um, you, will be you will be allocated an academic advisor at the beginning of your program. Currently, that's the program convener um, um, and, and that might involve other people in the future. So you will have regular meetings um, with um, one academic basically throughout your program to talk through. Uh, your module choices, your experiences, any kinds of issues that you might have in your plans. Um, uh, also, especially at, towards the end or kind of middle to the end um, of your degree about what comes after the degree. I think that's, that's also a very important aspect. Um, some colleagues might want to send you to the careers um, department where we have colleagues who might be able to help in quite different ways uh, from what academics can do. Um, so that's that's the kind of personal um, relationship that you have, and um, it might not be the same academic advisor throughout the um, uh, length of your program, but there's there should always be somebody, um, and you should be asking and, and making use of this opportunity to to talk to. Um, beyond that, um, 
it's yeah, basically the meetings that I mentioned. So we have at the beginning of the year, we had a meeting with students. I have a meeting this evening uh, with the second and third year global liberal arts students. And I will have one next week or the week after next with the first year students. So, so that's what I meant when, when I said we try to bring people together because the program tends to um, yeah, not, not provide a, a strong sense of community because everybody has their individual um, program structure. Um, say anything else? Does this answer the question? Did I forget something? I, I'm not sure. I think I think you've got it all. I think you've um, <laughs> encapsulated the opportunities that are there. Um, and I think something I know from sort of working at SOAS, albeit not in an academic role, is just you know speaking with you, speaking with other colleagues who are sort of teaching and um, involved in that in the departments. Um, you know the the door is always open um be that sort of physically when we're able to be on campus and you know metaphorically or preferably um sort of online um through through zoom and and teams and email as well so there's always i think that's something that lots of students do wonder about is you know how often will i be able to meet with um academic staff and, and ask them questions will it only be in those sort of set contact hours but it's mm -hmm. good to know that there are lots of opportunities available for support as and when you need it really Maybe talking about that, they also, I mean, so as that's not specific for the Global Liberal Arts Programme, but as an institution has, I mean, a, a, an almost overwhelming amount of opportunities to, to do things with other students, uh, the, the student union, student societies, all kinds of events uh, from, I mean, talking about current policy politics um, and current global problems, current whatever problems to um, cultural events, concerts, um, panel discussions. I mean, it's everything all the time. Um, and it's coming back now, right? So as you mentioned, this last year was a bit weird um, and, and very difficult in many ways. So uh, actually it's coming back in a different way. Um, so we've started experimenting with hybrid formats, um, which uh, bring together people who are not able to be physically at SOAS with people who are in a room. Um, so that's still things to, I mean, we have to figure out how that will all work because the dynamics are so different. Um, yeah, as I used to say, so as is a, an interesting place, it never ever gets boring. So <laughs> that's my personal experience at least. Yeah. Okay, do we have other questions? Makina, I don't know if you if there's anything um, you'd like to add. You're welcome to to chip in, of course. Um, I'm not sure if it's completely the same in the global liberal arts department, but I know for the economics department we have once a term. It's an event called Cakeonomics, where we literally get together in <laughs> one of the buildings. And we're fed cakes and treats oh, and we're given lots of drinks. <laughs> so there's always loads of opportunities for coming together as a department and just getting to know each other. It's not just the students that come in, all of the staff come in as well. And it's just a nice way to get to know people outside of the classroom. I will suggest that to my department. This sounds amazing. Kate, say it again. <laughs> Kate Norman? Cake economics because they just economics. sort of smushed economics and cake together. <laughs> Fantastic idea. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Maybe I should have prepared a cake for the meeting this evening. <laughs> I guess um, if if we don't have any more questions, then we can sort of we can draw it to a close. Um, Andrea, did you say you're happy to take any questions by email if something crops Absolutely, up afterwards? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So it's aj7 at SOAS AC UK, um, but you also find it on, on the website if you look for my name under history currently. It's just in the chat there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, great. So if, if there are no more questions at the moment, we can probably draw this um, to a close, I think. Is that okay, Dan? That's fine with me, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rosamond, were you about to ask something? I think I saw you on mute. Oh, no, um, I was just going to say thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, you Rosamond. Thanks for joining.
Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.